this 60s GM car came with dual overlap wipers, which mean the wipers wipe out to the outside of the windshield. In 1964, that was a $20.43 option. If you look in the upper corner, the windshield motor rusted along until I wanted to paint the firewall and make that look nice, and I took it off. But when I took it off, pulled the end off to clean it, and the brushes popped out, and one of them broke. Didn't know how to fix it, so it just set up on the shelf, and I just ran the car without windshield wipers because I didn't drive it in the rain. As you saw in the last video, with the alternator, I figured out how to put brushes in, and with that new skill set, I thought I would give it another try with the wiper motor. So I'm going to take it apart, and the first part of the wiper motor that comes off will be this little piece of plastic underneath it, those are all of the guts that do the windshield washer function. Once we get the last screw out, you can actually see the gearing, and then you can see the underside of how the pump gets the power. So here we go with a bunch of over 50-year-old grease inside of this thing. We want to zoom in here, and I don't know how long I've been carrying around this bug, but he's been there for a while. Next, I'm going to pull the armature out of the fuel coil, and you can see that it is in really good condition for its age. The pump is made out of steel, and so I've got rust on that. And what I'm going to do is put it in a Vapo rust, and I'm going to fill it up. But I just want to make it to underneath where that coil is, so I don't want to get that wet. And I'm doing the same thing for the bottom of the motor. That is a steel can right there. Evaporust doesn't hurt rubber or wire, so we're going to let it work its magic over time. This stuff is great. It works its magic. As you can see, what used to be rust is just wiping off with my thumb. Same thing with the steel where that washer pump is. Now I'm just going to take a rag to it and do some more final cleanup on it. Where the brushes go, I'm going to spray water because if I don't, evaporust will leave a sticky residue. All right, the first electrical step in the process is I want to get that broken brush and its copper wire removed out of the wiper motor. I'm using a pencil tipped soldering iron with the soldering station. That didn't work. I had to move to a 40 watt blunt tipped soldering iron in order to have enough heat to get it out. So there's the broken brush. Now I'm going to take the parts car motor apart and I'm going to pull one of the brushes out by desoldering it. Now it's time to get the parts car brush into my factory motor. So I'm going to hold it down there, put some solder on it. To get the armature back in, I'm going to make a brush holder similar to what you see in the manual there. I've made it out of a piece of coat hanger, but that is just going to hold those brushes and the springs back. Now I'm going to put a little bit of lithium grease on the bottom of it. There's a little ball bearing. And I'm going to make sure that that is well seated. Once it's well seated, that brush holder just comes right out. Now before I did all this, I wanted to see if I could get the armature into the field coil with still having all the wires connected. So I took some time to test that and I did figure out, yes indeed, the geometry worked. Now when I went to do it, after I had inserted the brushes, I couldn't get the geometry to work. The wires had twisted around into a different direction and there was just no way I was getting it in there. So I pulled it out, put the armature in the field coil first, then I put the cap on. And you can see I'm actually using blue tape now to hold back those carbon brushes in their spring as I assemble the unit, and then the blue tape will just pull right out. That will release that spring, and then I reassemble the motor. Now we're going to bench test the motor. And the first thing I'm going to do here is run a ground to the first pin, ground to the third pin. Now I'm going to ground the case. These are the grounds you need in order to have it start off in the low position. And then we put 12 volts to the center pin 
and the motor will run. You saw the park solenoid pulled back. If you pull off the left ground, it will switch to high speed operation. Then you're gonna to wanna to put that ground back on and removing the right ground is going to tell it to park. But mine wouldn't park for some reason. It just kept going around the mechanism. Now, what you're seeing on the back, if we go to the front, I actually made a whole toy for my children to play with out of used Buick Wildcat parts and it's got the wiper switch right on it. So now we're gonna hook up a factory wiring harness to it and see if I can make it park this way. And so you've got the wiper motor, you've got to give the wiper motor ground in this situation. And then let's see if it'll park with the factory wire. And it doesn't, it just keeps going round and round. And I found this article on Google where someone rebuilt a boat motor and it went in reverse. And it says, hey, it sounds like you swapped the brushes. And I hadn't thought about this. And if we go back to when I was trying to put the thing together the first time, you remember that I had a problem getting that armature into the fuel coil. And I think right here is where the brushes are 180 degrees out from where they need to be. So now I've marked the motor to know where I've started and I'm going to rotate the motor and then give myself new alignment marks of where it needs to be. I'm pulling the back of the can off because the brushes have fallen out when I rotated it. I forgot this felt washer, so I'm putting it in this time. And then I'm gonna put some more lubrication on the end of the armature. And then I'm gonna pack everything back in the motor case as delicately as I can. Screw it back together. Now I've cleaned all the grease out and I'm putting white lithium grease in and packing it well so that the motor is well lubricated. Now I'm gonna put it back on my test stand and see if it will work this time. All right, and there is low speed going around and around and around. There is high speed, making a little bit of noise. I'm gonna move it around, see if I can quiet that down because some things are probably up against the wiring. And I've told it to park, and the paw comes out, and it works just like it should. It was running in reverse. Now I've spent a lot of time cleaning the motor. I do a lot of scrubbing. I spend a lot of money in brass brushes. I found that's the best thing to use on the aluminum. I'm not trying to polish it. I'm just trying to get all of the oxidation off. So I'm getting into all the nooks and crannies and spending a lot of time and a lot of elbow grease cleaning it up. This motor has a shunt in it. It's that thing that looks like a big resistor and it will run hot because current is going through it. I wanna show you how to adjust the in play. This is something that's in the manual, but it says with this screw right here, you should back it off and then tighten it enough to where it gets tight, then back off the screw a quarter of the turn and tighten the lock nut. It's time to put the top cover back on that has got the pump assembly. We do that by aligning the cam slot with the drive pin that is in the assembly. I'm gonna move around that cam slot, get it kind of close, and then I will bump the motor over to get it even closer because it likes to snap into place. Once they're aligned, we will screw this case down so we can get on to the next step. You wanna bench test the wiper pump. Hot is on the right in this orientation, ground is on the left, and you can manually actuate the pump just by pushing up on this mechanism. To disassemble the valve body for the inputs and outputs of the washer fluid is just four screws, and we can see valves down in that hole. One is the opposite direction. It's kind of a sandwich, and then when you pull the second disc off, you can see the bellows that does the pumping. To reassemble this, I'm putting it back in with a lot of waterproof grease across it. I've also painted the input and output connections and then reassembled it with those four screws. And then we're gonna give it a test with a little bit of washer fluid with power applied to the pump and to the motor. You can see it is pumping just fine. I'm gonna clean up the plastic cover with just a little bit of back to black and a good scrubbing. 
I want to call attention to this brass ground strap. It goes between the cover and the body of the pump and then it's just held down with the pressure of the screw. I went to take the hoses off so I could get this on the car and they broke. It was really disappointing because that was my original but for seven dollars and seven cents I was able to buy a replacement from Dorman. Disassembly not that hard. You've got the four screws. This kit did come with everything that I needed. It's got all of the rubber pieces in it, including these valves that you simply push through and then you pull with some pliers to get this little nub correctly seated. Make sure you put a third valve on there on the opposite side and don't forget it like I did and have to do it again. The kit came with this rubber gasket, but I found it didn't have an application for this unit. The input and output block just simply attached to the other side of those bellows there. Everything is tightened down. Now we're gonna get the test going again. Put it down in some washer fluid and see if it'll pump again. So the test is working. You can see I've got a little less output out of the top. I'm not sure if that's just unequalized because it's not in the car and there's no resistance, but I put my thumb over it and you can see it's got a good strong stream out of the top of it. Now the unit's ready to go back in the car. If we compare the new to the old and the new again, it's got a dramatic change. The last step here is I like to spray fluid film on a rag and then put it around the steel parts of the wiper motor. There's no coating on this, so to keep it from rusting, I'm putting a little fluid film on it. To install it on the car, I'm gonna start putting some silicone adhesive around the gasket. That's necessary because it's getting installed in a wet area. Now I'm gonna get the little lever that this mounts into, into position, and seat it onto the wiper motor. It's very hard to get a hand in there to get a nut on it but I did find it possible and then I got it tightened up. And then the wiper motor is attached to the car. I ran a test run. I found that there was way too much distance between that lever and the rod and my nut was not securely on. When I went thumbing through the book, I see here that there's a retainer that you can take off. Right here is a linkage from my parts car that I saved. And as we pan down, there is a clip that can be taken off that end. Motor's gonna come back out of the car, and then I'm going to pull that assembly out and get the clip off of there so that I can just pull that little lever. Then I can attach the lever off of the car on the little work surface to where I know that I can get it correctly seated down on the motor and the bolt tight. Putting it back on the car was quite an adventure. It took many attempts, but you're getting that pin through the hole, and then you're putting that clip on it in the limited space. A little persuasion with the screwdriver was necessary to get it seated like I needed it seated. And then the whole nine yards folds up, gets in that hole, and then the wiper motor is again screwed into the firewall. The next step is to replace all the wiper hoses. The great thing is the manual shows exactly how long each one of the hoses should be, how large in diameter the hoses should be. I picked them all up at O'Reilly for $5.65. Installation is pretty simple. I started with the one closest to the washer pump, insert the end on the washer pump, insert the end on the car. Then we moved on to the one to go to the washer bottle, which is a quarter inch connector. And I used hose I asked for from the back of the store instead of what was on the shelf because they had a fuel line on the shelf, which was a really thick hose. It didn't look right in my application. The third step is gonna to be to put the long hose on that goes across the side of the car and loops into each one of the hooks that are welded onto the car that both the wiring harnesses and the hose go into. I'm gonna push the hose behind the heater relay here. 
to get it attached to the other side and make it look cleaner under the hood. Here are all the hoses in place. I want to take a moment to talk about the washer fluid reservoir. You should have a screen at the bottom of your tube. If your jug is old like mine, for about $65, you can get another one. What goes in the washer fluid jug? Well, this GM OptiClean windshield washer concentrate along with some water. Let's turn on the wipers and give them a test. We've got a stalk rotating back and forth on the driver's side. Same thing on the passenger side. Let's move that up to high. I've got the cover off for the next test. And let's run the washer pump. I went ahead and I threw some wipers on it because I wanted to see this to completion. The wipers run, put a little water on it so it doesn't have a bunch of resistance. And the wipers are operational once again. This is where we started. This is where we finished. Thank you so much for watching. Please keep up at 1964buick.com.